Oh, I'm, I'm quickly running out of time, so I th I'm going to make a somewhat abrupt shift uh, <laughs> uh, that also has to do with reading feminist developments in history. Um, and um, so I guess what I'm going to talk about now is the fact that the cultural circulation of images and ideas can sometimes be limiting. Uh, so how has uh, Rosa, Rosa Parks been represented? I mean, everybody, almost everybody in this country knows her name, right? Um, but they only know one thing about her. And she is, as she has imagined, as sitting on that bus for her entire life. <laughs> <laughs> and refusing to move. <laughs> um, so it's true that she refused to move to the back of the bus, uh, uh, but not inadvertently, as some people suggest. Some people suggest she was tired and her feet were hurting. Um, and we know that this moment created a catalyst for the boycott, for the bus boycott and the civil rights movement more broadly. There is a book by Danielle McGuire that is entitled At the, end, At the Dark End of the Street. Black Women, Rape, and Resistance. And there's also a film entitled The Rape of Reese Taylor. Uh, and uh, it can be seen, I think it can still be seen on, on demand on television. Um, and um, both the book and the film detail uh, the 1944 case of Reese. Taylor, who was gang raped by young white men in a small town in Alabama um, called Abbeville, Alabama. And so what is the connection with, uh, what is the connection with Rosa Parks? She was um, an investigator for the NAACP and helped to um, helped to create a movement around uh, that case. But also, uh, and uh, Margaret Burnham, uh, who is uh, uh, in the audience, um, will attest to the fact uh, that so much of our history, which is connected with the, the, the work of black communists, has been um, completely uh, concealed. Uh, and so if you, if you look at this film, you will see a woman whose name is Esther Cooper Jackson, um, who is still alive. And she, uh, and Margaret's mother, um, Dorothy Burnham, Dorothy is 103, 104. She's already 104. She just turned 104. And how old is Esther? Okay, there's, a, there's an amazing interview in that film with Esther uh, Cooper Jackson, uh, who's 103 now. And Margaret just told me that her mother is 104. Uh, yeah, her mother was my mother's best friend. And so we've known each other forever. Uh, um, but she gives an interview. Uh, she was involved as a leader of the Southern Negro Youth Congress. And she gives an interview about the work that was done to uh, create a movement to defend um, Risi um, um, Taylor, who was gang, gang raped. Uh, but the, the, the point that I'm making is that organizing, which addressed sexual violence, created the groundwork for the Montgomery bus boycott mobilization. Uh, and of course, women were in the forefront in both instances. Uh, but we don't know the, we don't know the prehistory of the, the boycott. We assume that, that Rosa Parks, who, had no his, who has no history herself, you know, she was just a tired woman who didn't move to the back of the bus. 
And then spontaneously, this movement emerged. Uh, um, and what I want to suggest is that uh, 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 both those um, events that required an enormous amount of organizing uh, were, um, were organized by women. Women were in the forefront in both instances. Uh, and I think that if in our organizing today around sexual violence, we were more attentive to the, those relationalities and the connections and the structural um, uh, character of racism and the structural character of misogyny, we might be able to pull our way, ourselves away from uh, myopically focusing on the individual cases and assuming that what we have to do is make sure that this man loses his job or make sure that this man goes to, to jail and make sure that something happens to this individual man. And of course, the, the, the men should be held accountable. But we can continue to do that forever and, 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 and gender violence will still be with us. The lesson that we have learned about the need to acknowledge and work on and contest the structural character of racism uh, should also be applied uh, to sexism and misogyny.